Hi, I'm Miles McGann, and I'm the CEO of Progressive Orthodontics. Today, we have a very special guest. This is my father, Dr. Don McGann. He is the founder of POS. I'm sure most of you guys know him. Um, he's back in town this weekend, and we're going to have a little conversation about orthodontics, his career, um, as well as where he sees orthodontics going in the future. So first of all, welcome, Dad. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here. Um, first of all, let's start talking about how you started POS. What kind of prompted you to, to, to want to get into orthodontics? In the very beginning, myself, I was not taught orthodontics in dental school, just like everybody else. And that bothered me, especially when, when patients were asking advice on their kids and, you know, and I didn't know the first thing about it. Right. And so then I started learning orthodontics uh, from USDI back in 1977. Okay. And um, then I started teaching for them in 1980. Okay. And um, well, there was a turning point. It was in Kansas City, and there were, they were. I was teaching the last seminar and. Uh, in their series and the students didn't really know what they were supposed to be doing and uh, on the plane home I had I was thinking about what happened at the end of the seminar they were trying to get there were six of them trying to get me to go to their to their location to teach them yep. starting again from the basics and I refused yeah. I had too much going on, two practices. So at that moment, I decided, okay, I'm going to take on the challenge to make a curriculum to teach these six and who knows who. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't know their names. I didn't get their contact. <laughs> but uh, I was going to take the challenge to, to raise the education level of uh, orthodontics to general dentists because it was a laughing stock. General dentists were were not highly regarded as their orthodontic skills. So when you first decided to start learning ortho, did you envision ortho being a big part of your practice or just part, because you've always been a big comprehensive guy. And so when you first started out, you kind of thought, oh, I have a hole in my education, I need to fill the hole in the education. Did you intend it to become a huge part of your practice or just more of a, let's fill in something, I don't like having a hole. <laughs> I just don't like having a hole. I know And I one. enjoyed all of the, aspects of dentistry and uh, I don't know, I'm not sure I really would have enjoyed being a specialist only doing anything. Right. And um, so the comprehensive part kept my interest, I think. And orthodontics was, of course, um, it just fits into everything that you're doing in dentistry. And it just, it, just, it just spread throughout my practice to where I wanted to focus on that. I mean, could you imagine doing dentistry without ortho? You can do it. I did it for, I don't know, three years or something. But, uh, well, you make misdiagnoses. You don't see a lot of things. If you don't know anything about it, you don't see it. I guess I always wanted to feel like I was doing the best job. Right. And without ortho, I couldn't do the best job. It's just, it's just that simple. You're miss, there, there's a blinder, and you don't see a lot of things. And you've always said, I know you're a huge proponent of expanding your skills because you've always said the more that I know the more that I see and I think with ortho that becomes really relevant where a lot of people that don't know ortho don't even realize how much they're not seeing and they don't see the options they right. don't see you could do this instead of that they see a chip on a front tooth they want to put either a composite or a crown me I'll see okay composite crown or or let's do some ortho, extrude it, make a new incisal edge on some of the most simple things that we do. And um, people try to put uh, veneers on crowded teeth and have a tough time making them look right. I say, no, no, okay, I see that. Yes, okay, after ortho, maybe they need veneers, but let's do some ortho first, let's first alignment, and then we can do a better job on the veneers. And you'll have a happier, happier patient, happier dentist. And it'll last longer. <laughs> and it'll, it'll <laughs> <laughs> you're not having to compromise all the time. Right. So ortho being a primary part of your practice because you look at it as a foundation of everything. Did you realize when you first started ortho how many patients you had that needed ortho? 
Oh, no. Because oh. I, I hear that all the time of these students go, well, I, I think I want to learn ortho, but I don't know if I really have the patience. And I think one of the things that I've learned over the years is, you know, once people start, get a basic understanding of what orthodontics is, and all of a sudden they see ortho everywhere in their practice. Was that the same with you in your practice? I know it's a long time ago, but. <laughs> oh, I can remember that well because I had, uh, I had like, two practices. One of them was a very mature practice. I had bought it from uh, a retiring dentist, Dr. Perry Davis, and uh, he didn't accept any children. And so, and that adult practice turned into a bigger ortho practice than, than the other one that had the kids in Laguna Niguel. Right. And so uh, who would ever guess? And so I, I had probably at least half of my ortho patients were adults. Right. And um, uh, in those days, adult ortho was just barely starting. Right. And um, it was everywhere. Right. So really, uh, anybody that says they don't have ortho in their practice just doesn't know what they're looking at. They don't see it. It's right there in front of their face, but they don't see it. They haven't been trained to even see it. In your mind, almost every patient that walked through your door, I remember one time you told me, in my practice, 99.9% .9 of patients need ortho. Now, I'm not going to do ortho on all of them, but everybody needs it at some level. At some level. At some level, they would like it. Right. Even the ones with straight teeth, they, if you ask them, they say, no, they aren't. You know, I'd like this, I'd like that. I, and you go, well, there's, that could be done, but... Um, you, you know, you don't have the typical case that people think of that you need orthodontics. But as soon as you start saying, well, I can fix changeable display, well, I can fix this, I can fix that, I can widen the buccal corridors, I can, you know, there's just endless things that you can do, especially if you have the skills to back it up with restorative and perio and all those things. So. You make people so they are happy about their teeth. They're able, they will then start taking care of them. They'll then, um, you know, be proud to smile. It changes their life. Yeah. And it changes your life when you can see all those things. So even just at seminar one, people come back at seminar two and they go, oh my God, there's cases everywhere. And all they had to do is say, geez, we've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, maybe you'd like to straighten your teeth. Oh, really? Yeah, of course I would. I didn't know you did that. <laughs> and it comes. <laughs> I, just, I, I just started doing it. How about that? Yeah. 